Okay, now you was talking about prayer in school. When you first got to the school, they had prayer in school. Yeah. But somewhere in the time that you was teaching, this was in the 60s, I suppose, then they took prayer out of school. Mm-hmm. So what, 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 what was that all about? What, what, what happened in that time period? I don't know what organization did mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. But it, became, it went to the uh, council, city council. No, went to the local council. And it either going on, went on up until it got into the state capital. Mm. Uh, and the reason for it was because people should have the privilege for prayer if they wish. Mm-hmm. Everybody was thinking it was uh, one of those oh, good deals. If you want to, good. If not, you don't have to. And that was the way it was presented. Not like you will not. Didn't say that. Mm. There will not be any prayer. So since they didn't say it, uh, there will not be any. Mm. It was left up to the means, minds of my, my children. Who were saying, "How can we eat uh-huh. without saying our blessings?" Mm. One little girl said to me, "Well, Mama Bagby." I see you eating sometimes. You don't say anything. Your lips do not move. Your eye, you close your eyes and you kind of put the head down a little bit. And when you finish, you open your eyes and you look at us and smile and proceed to eat. Are you playing? Are you praying? I said, Yes. One little boy said, is this a prayer you've been saying a long time? I said, I think as old as my son is, that's how long I've been doing it. So one person said, did you teach your son that particular prayer that you pray? I said, yes, I did. I said, but I call that a prayer for all occasions. I shouldn't have said that. Oh, boy. Prayer for all occasions. Hmm. I said, that, they said, when did he use those prayers? I said, before he went to bed at night. That's one. Hmm. When he was at the table having a meal. You may have three meals when a day. When he was going on a vacation. Oh, so no. When he was going out to play. Uh, going, somebody was taking him someplace on a trip or something. Hmm. They said, why did you do that? I said, I was praying to ask God's blessings upon this is the experience he was about to take. And at the same time, if I'm going someplace, I want the protection too. So the the prayer, it was an all purpose prayer, but also, now let me see, you you sort of pray, I guess you didn't have to pray five times a day because you you had the morning prayer, you had the three meals prayer, right? And then you had to go to bed prayer, that's five times. Those are the consistent ones. And then on top of that, if you was going on a trip or some special, some mm-hmm. other occasion, then you might have prayer. So you, they call it a, as they call it a, a God consciousness. In other words, if you're praying all the time, then you're, you're keeping a, 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 you know, a, a consciousness of a higher power. Mm-hmm. So at least five times a day, you're, you're acknowledging the higher power, if not more. Right. Oh, okay. But did they go, did they, did that, was that enough answer for them? I don't know. They didn't go home and tell the parents. There is a way you can do this. And the daddies would, they always told their daddies, most time, they reported me that they would tell, tell, tell their daddies at the dinner table. So evidently, this child bowed her head and whispered a prayer, evidently. So the, the, everybody at the table looking, wonder why is she the only one in there praying? You know you're not supposed to have prayer in school. And her answer was, this is not school, this is home. And then Mama Bagby says, you can do it at home. I didn't tell them you could do it at home. 
the daddy said, if Mama Bagby said it, that's the way we're going to do it. Everybody, close your eyes and whisper a prayer. They don't know what the prayer is, but everybody had to close their eyes because the child told that Mama Bagby said, this is the way you do it when you can't pray in, the, when you can't pray in school. <laughs> My friend, I had a principal that said, though it's amazing the things that happens in your classroom that is so different from what the other people do with. Only because you have some children in the class who believe that you are. What did she use that word? Unshakable. Mm. Nothing worried you like that. Because you knew you have to have some answer for your babies. They will feel comfortable. They would be comfortable with or without me. Mm -hmm. Okay, that that's the child taking the prayer situation home. But what I'm let's go back to the school. What what? So I'm not clear. There's a something came down that you 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 don't have to have prayer in school anymore. So now you're saying that some classes had pr prayer and some didn't. I don't understand. Some did it on their own. They just said nobody's gonna. My classroom, and I do what I want to do in my classroom. That's what the teachers were saying. It's a teacher speaking. Okay, okay. And since we're in, we're we're in the South, I guess everybody was doing the the, the Southern Christian thing. Mm -hmm. But if, if, if but did, did any children say, "Hey, I'm I'm not with this prayer thing" or whatever? It, it took a name. She said, "Uh." When the kids went to uh, for lunch, the teachers had a table at the front by the stage. Mm -hmm. And if they wanted to eat with other teachers, they could sit up there. Others sat at the table with the children. So mm -hmm. that particular day, Robbie, my baby, my artistic baby, mm -hmm. was chosen to be the teacher assistant. Robbie came in there with the children. They went through the line and got what they wanted. Uh, got their dinner. Came in, put the uh, things on the table, the, the place on the table, and anything else they had for lunch. And we'll sit still, put the hands in the lap. No, take the napkin and put it in the laps. Mm -hmm. Then she said, she watched them. She said, all of them did the same thing. She said, I wonder who was a teacher assistant for Doe's class. She said, you think it's going to be, I said, it's probably Robbie. They said, no, that's not going to be Robbie because Robbie just saved, Robbie saved the day. He was like underdog. Because mm -hmm. they said, if Thayer said that if Robbie stayed, she was gone with her purse, her key, her attache case, and everything. She was leaving. Mm -hmm. And that's how I got Robbie in my class, because the principal asked me if I would do her a favor. I said, sure. She said, would you please take Robbie to your class so I can try to uh, convinced there that it's not as bad as she thinks it is. Mm -hmm. It's going to be better. So I said, I'll take it. He saw me. He said, am I going with you? I said, I think so. I said, behave yourself, man. He said, yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. So we talked about Robbie before. Now, but this thing with prayer in school, I don't understand what... Uh, um, Sometimes some teachers could sit with would sit with the children, and then a lot of times the teachers would sit by themselves. But the children and the teachers would all be in the same lunchroom. Mm -hmm. So how did prayer enter that? I mean, did, did some tables pray and not pray? Did some some people also? Uh, how did that? I don't know, mm -hmm. because each class that would come in there was doing something a little hairline different from what the other. Teach other class may have uh, 
shown when they came in for lunchtime. Okay, maybe that's the question. When they when when the, it came down that the 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 classes didn't have to pray, or they could pray, whatever it is. Now, this prayer, this was was this at the, I know at the beginning of the day it was always a pledge of allegiance, right? Mm -hmm. But when did the prayer came in? When when before it came down, whether you could do it or not? Did the prayer did the praying happen after the pledge of allegiance, or did it happen? Um, uh, did it didn't happen uh, during a uh, meal during lunchtime when, when they had the regular prayer before they changed the rules when when did that happen I don't know I don't know because I'm thinking right now there were some children who uh didn't add it they didn't ever pray if they did they didn't say it the teachers didn't say that they were praying. And there were some classes where the just kids come on in with the trays, get the food, and sit down and eat. And when it was time to leave, they get up, wipe the table off, and get out of there. Okay, so the prayer the prayer in school was happening during meal time. It wasn't happening during Pledge of Allegiance time. No, no, it was a, a it was a, a root recommendation for the entire school. At the time that they would be normally uh, having school opening activities, which included pledging the flag and singing a song and having a oh, prayer. Oh, okay, and that okay. Was it. Okay, like 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 Congress, you know. They, they, yes. Okay, okay, okay. Then so. get down to business after that, you know. I see, I see, I see. Okay. But they took out Christmas decorations. No, not decorations. Christmas ornaments on trees. You could have a Christmas tree at school, but you could not have any electrical, uh, no lights and bulbs and things like that on there. Oh, but you can have a, you can have a little uh, the, the, the 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 string kind of stuff or, or a candy cane can hang on there. You could do that. Oh, okay. okay. But you couldn't have anything electrical because they said that would uh, that was too dangerous mm. and. And in some homes, they don't do it at all. And they didn't want to make the children who, whose parents wanted to have it, to refrain from having it, it would put a, a damper on some of those children. Mm -hmm. Because they look forward to what well, Christmas time would come, mm -hmm. and the families gathering and everything. They look forward to that. Well, around here in Chesapeake, the the, the whole Chesapeake, Portsmouth, uh, Norfolk, isn't there a, a, a one little community that every Christmas there is a Cavalier man? What are the very Christmas people the cars that go past this community because every house is competing against the other house? And yeah, they have competitive thing. Well, where where is that at? Oh gosh, let me see. Was that Cla Cavalier Manor? Where Cavalier Manor. Uh, but no, there's one. No, it's, I don't think I don't know if it's Cavalier Manor. I know there's one. It's a small street. It's almost like a cul-de-sac. You could go, not a cul-de-sac, but you know, you you go in one way, you can go out the other way, but it's mm -hmm. like a. Uh, there's maybe only fifteen houses involved. I mean, maybe not that that little. It's. Uh, Crest Harbor. Crest Harbor. Crest Harbor's one of them. It's like a crest, so it's like a crest. Mm -hmm. And you can go around it, and it's like every year. Every year. Those people and compete they, with each other. They are probably getting started right now. <laughs> I mean, you're no big deal. Now, they can't, it's that Labor Day yet. It's, it's Labor, Labor Day is coming up, so they, they, gotta, they can't start before Labor Day. They got to get themselves together because they have a plan how they want. The, everything to look, and then is it becomes a family thing. Everybody participates in it. But now, so but you have a uh, Halloween comes before that. It was Halloween, Thanksgiving, and then Christmas. So they put the but the, so that's right. Aren't they supposed to put the Halloween decorations first? Then take them down. See to what they, no, they don't take it down. They just put up a minimum decoration uh, early. 
uh-huh. such that when the a season where other people are celebrating, they can just add. Oh, I see. <laughs> to what it is. Uh-huh. And then, then they don't put anything else up there because no. they got they had the competition declared. <laughs> but did you did uh, did you see when this competition started? Do you remember how it got to be as big as because it seems to be a big thing around here now? Did you see how it did it start like that? Small or uh, it's it not that small? Because the first time Walter and I went to see one, uh, it was in Hampton. Mm. The entire street was decorated, and you went to a certain house on that street. You will be able to go in the front door, go to the basement, and there'll be some decorations down there. And they may call that the rail area, the railroad something. And everything down there. Because they had electric trains running around down yeah. there? Yeah. Oh, I remember Lionel trains. They would have those trains in there running around. And the music to go with it. That was on the first, that basement floor. Uh-huh. Well, I thought that was about it. That was a wonderful thing. Somebody said, second floor, beginning of the first, no, beginning of the first floor. First floor had another thing. It was more exciting than the first, than the basement floor. I said, Walter, you think we'll ever finish this house? He said, I don't know, though. He said, but it certainly is interesting. I said, it certainly is. We stayed there to the house. We went through the whole house. And I had said, if anyone takes this time to do all this decorating, somebody else ought to be appreciating it other than us, Walter. Mm-hmm. He said, no, we can come back next year because I don't believe we're going to do this for one time mm-hmm. and one time only. I said, I think I agree with you. But when we came out of that house, cars were lined up, mm. double parking for someone to come out of the house to get in that vehicle. They know there was a space for them in that car to go in. Mm-hmm. Very organized. Mm. I don't know who the person was in charge of it. Whatever who it was, it done a good job. Mm. Good job. And that was around Christmas time then. Yeah. Wow. I guess. Well, that's enough on ornaments, I guess. Because we get into that season, they they start they start as early as they possibly can. Oh yeah. Uh, but now it's turned into a whole big, you know, how do we separate you from your money kind of situation. <laughs> Some of those people are able to make their own. Uh, decoration of ornaments and things of the sort because what they would keep them from one year to the next year. I don't know where they stored all this stuff but you go next year and you'd be almost like a brand new theme mm. that had a theme that they worked around. Mm. I said, okay. I said, well, when I go home I'm going to go home to my little, my little Christmas tree they wouldn't let me have but I didn't have a tree last year. Well, last year was COVID, yeah. Uh-huh. So, that's what it is. Okay, well. It wasn't for COVID. I was about to say they last just said I didn't need it. <laughs> oh, they just told me. Told me what I didn't need. I told them, I said, I know what I want. I didn't say I need it. Mm-hmm. I, would, I would like to have, I would like to have that. Because I had gotten in the habit of going to midnight mass. Mm-hmm. Coming home, and Walter would say, "How was the mass?" I said, "It was beautiful." Let me give you a little essence of it. Mm. And he would say, "Okay." He said, "I just left uh, St. Peter's Basilica." I said, "You did." He said, "You know one thing: that priest can give a good sermon." He said, "He said, though, if you don't happen to go to midnight mass one time, you stay home. You look at." Look at the father. The father has a good sermon. Oh, you mean on TV? Saint Peter's Basilica mm-hmm. on TV from from uh from Rome, mm-hmm. from Italy. Mm-hmm. Okay. I said okay. That's what we would do. But when they told me that I didn't need a Christmas tree, uh, 
it was because they didn't want me to climb the steps in the mm -hmm. garage mm -hmm. up in the attic to get my Christmas stuff, decoration stuff. Oh, okay. I told them, I said, it's no danger. Only I do is bring the boxes down. I have them labeled and everything. Only thing I want you to do is just bring it down, put it in the Florida room, and I will do the rest myself. Mm -hmm. They say, you don't need that. That's okay. Okay. Well, what's, what's the way you treat me? <laughs> what, what's going to happen My this year? My feelings didn't even get hurt. Huh? <laughs> what's going to What's going to happen this year? I'm going to have a Christmas tree. If I have to go out in the woods <laughs> and cut my own tree down, <laughs> can you see me out in the tree? I'm in the bushes trying to cut me a tree down. I better be the cutest little tree you ever seen in your life. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, we had a Christmas tree when uh, that particular year that they held everybody's check in December, the week before Christmas, all the checks were frozen until after Christmas, which was in January. Oh, after Christmas holidays, okay. Now you talking about a sad community. You knew people who, who worked at the federal government because they're the only ones that seem to have a different type of decoration uh, at, at the house. They had the basic candle burning mm -hmm. or wreath at the window and it has something else. You say, well, they just don't, they don't go in for a whole lot of decoration. I didn't know that because they didn't have any money to buy anything. Oh, these are, these are all the government workers. And, mm -hmm. uh, well, government workers, also the teachers saying that they held back, okay. But you know, uh, the Lord is good. Christmas Eve, the door, Somebody knocked at the door, and I went to the door. My daddy said, Sister, would you check the door and see who's there? I said, yes, sir. I went to the door, in walks Mr. Robert and Miss Meyer, who live next door to us, with two grocery bags, holding it by the handle. I said, what is they doing? Bringing things over here. Mm. Must want me to just to hold on to them until they get ready for it. I think there was a gift or something in there. Mm. And they said, Merry Christmas. I said, thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Robert Outlaw. And they left. The next door was another knock at the door. It was Miss B and Mr. Felton, her husband, and with two shopping bags being held by the handle. Mm. And they said, Merry Christmas. I said, thank you. And they left. I said to myself, this is like a story. And this is not a real thing. I said, if the doorbell rings, the door, somebody knocks at the door again, and there's somebody in there with some shopping bags, I'm going to figure something is going on that they didn't, aren't telling us. Mm. My daddy didn't say anything but say thank you so much. Thank you so much. My children and I and mother will be so are so thankful. Thank you so much. Mm. The door somebody knocked at the door again. There's Miss Pearline and Mr. Sonny down the, the next row at the end with two shopping bags. I don't know why they chose shopping bags, but that's what they had. Held by the handle. When we looked into those things, those bags, there was decorations for a tree, mm -hmm. blue lights. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it might became my favorite color, but they had all the decorations for a tree in one of those shopping bags. Mm -hmm. uh, shopping bags. Not only did it have something for the 
decoration with the tree they had or it had another bag because there was a present in the bag for somebody in the family they had a my sister loved doll babies so they got her doll for her the one that a doll could do everything if it wanted to and I said oh she'll like this my brother one next to me they said he he called they call him the intelligent one he's always trying to create something that's different mm. so he had a some game that they had for him and then they had a, a football mm. the football was mine i knew the football it wouldn't be for anybody in the house <laughs> but for me because they knew i like playing football oh that's right tell me that story about everybody you. In the house, got a present, and then Christmas morning, Miss Myra came over there, and Mister Robert went into the kitchen and was going to help me fix breakfast with what they had purchased mm. for our breakfast. Then so, they, they just they just for they did this for your family. The community did this for your family. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. These these four families. Mm -hmm. Now, how about how old were you when that was when that was happening? I was about, uh, I guess, about eight, seven or eight years old. Okay, okay, okay. That's when community was really community. Yeah. I said, "This is what I talk about a miracle." You know, it's the movie that was a miracle on some kind of. 34th Street. Yes. I said, this is like Miracle 34th Street. Mm -hmm. You don't know where anything is coming from, but all of a sudden, there it is. There it is. I said, mm. I said that was uh, the Christmas that was that almost didn't happen. Mm. Mm. But I said, well, that's all right. When I get to be a, my daddy told me, he said, sister, just go along with it. One of these days, you're going to be old enough to have what you want to have. And you won't have to ask anybody anything. Just do it because you want to do it. Mm -hmm. And it makes you happy. I said, yes, sir. That's all we can ask for. The, That's the, all. The, the joyous seasons. Enjoy the season. Because, see, my brother uh, is uh, with the Muslim. Mm-hmm. I think he's gone into that, and he has his own rules and regulations, things you can do and cannot do, and I just look at him and listen. So, uh, but my brother, who was the witness, drove a witness, used to come over here and check on me almost every other day, and when he would come here, I think one day I had... I had my tree lit, and we were sitting in the in the Florida room, and he was saying, "That music is pretty." I said, "You want me to turn it up for you?" He said, "No, you don't have to." Uh, he said, "I tried to refrain from it." I said, "As pretty as that, you refrain from it?" I said, "Can't you just listen to it a little bit?" He said, "No." I can't. He said, I bought something for you to hear. He bought me a, a CD of one of the brethren in the church doing a sermon. And I said, if this is Jehovah Witness, you ought to show this to somebody else. And I just said that. I didn't know he was going to actually make me a tape of it. Mm. That man preached with me on my way to work in the morning. Huh. And when I was coming home in the evening, mm -hmm. he continued to, to, to preach. Excellent voice. Oh, the kind that if you were saying something and you hear him talking, you would say, shh, let's listen. That's how good he was. Mm -hmm. Well, there you I go. Said, That's all right. Holidays and religion go together. Mm. Did 
didn't bother me a bit. No, I got you. Because when we were children, we were having things at school. The kids who were witnesses or with our other religious uh, organizations of services always had a time that they had to leave, they would leave their classroom and go to the office and sit during the time that you were having something in the classroom with the children. Yeah. I thought that was terrible, you know. They aren't doing anything but just eating some, uh, having something punch and cookies or ice cream and, and some occasionally they had the peppermint sticks and the, Well, obviously it wasn't allowed in school. You had to do that at home. I said, wonder why they have to go to the cat to the office just like they're being dis I just look to me it was like they were being punished. Hmm. So I asked my brother about it. What about that? Do they, is there anything with a, as a witness, Jehovah Witness, that they cannot be in the room where things are happening? Not anything to hurt anybody, but is there a rule that says they cannot be in the room and have to go to the principal's office? He said, oh, well, I think uh, based on that explanation, I would say that we better they go to the uh, office. I said, oh, I'm going to fix this. I asked Carolyn. Now, Carolyn was born, bred and born as a witness. I said, Carolyn, would you explain to me if I'm doing something wrong? When we have uh, the daddies and the mamas have a little celebration for the children, I said, uh, would it be wrong if I did not send my children to the office during the time that the parents were there with a little treat for the kids? She said, no. I said, why is it that uh, some of the children have to go there? Mm. He said, you know, part of it could be that it's being interpreted there indoctrinating the children to something into a religious group. I said, oh. Well, so if you're not doing that, she said, I don't see any reason why they can't stay in the classroom. Mm. I said, man, Carolyn knows what you're talking about, I thought. Mm. And then my brother found out what I was doing. He said, you think that was the right thing to do? I said, I don't know if it was the right thing, but it wasn't the wrong thing to do. Because my kids seem very happy. Mm. I said, oh, man. Well, they say rules are rules. <laughs> yes, they are. Mm. 